Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, welcome to this homily on this 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And we reflect upon the Gospel passage from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. Last Sunday, the theme for our reflection was persistence in prayer through the parable of the unjust judge and the widow. And we saw that the persistence in prayer is not to twist the arms of God to get what we want. But through our constant relation with him, we are able to change ourselves to accept God's plan. Today also we are given a parable on prayer of the two people, a Pharisee and a tax collector. So today's readings nicely follow last Sunday's teaching on prayer. And we find three messages for us today, especially from the Gospel passage. Firstly, the parable teaches us about the nature of prayer, that prayer is a humble surrender of ourselves before God, acknowledging our unworthiness. Let's start with the last verse where Jesus said, I tell you, this man, the tax collector, went down to his house justified rather than the other. Now what happened? What happened to the Pharisee? The answer is simple. Both of them went up to pray in the temple, or both of them were in the presence of God, but only one prayed, the tax collector, and he went home finding fair with God. The other did not pray. Did the Pharisee pray really? No. He only recited a litany of his own achievements, his own merits. He was only telling God how good he was. To God, he only said, God, I thank you, which was not a prayer as such, but an introduction to a proud, vainglorious ostentation of himself. Then he started his enumeration of his own virtues, how he is better than all the others. And he in a way said, I am better, not because you made me better, rather I made myself better than others through my actions. And then he specifies how he made himself better. The trouble with the Pharisee is that he feels satisfied and proud because I'm not like them. He compares himself with others and feels that he is great. He was in fact supposed to have asked, am I like him, the heavenly father? Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. That's what Jesus said, Matthew's gospel chapter 5 verse 48. If he had done that, he would have knelt down and prayed for God's mercy, for he would know I am a sinner. When prophet Isaiah saw himself among, among the heavenly chorus in the presence of Yahweh, he said, Woe to me, I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Isaiah 6, 5. When Peter saw the power of Jesus, in the miraculous catch of fish, he said, Depart from me, O God, for I am a sinful man. We should compare ourselves with God, not with others. That's what the tax collector did. He knew how he really is, what he really is. That he, was, he had no merits to reckon before God, but only his own sinfulness. So he, he simply said, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That is real prayer. And so he went home justified before God. So when you are before God, let your attitude be this. Lord, compared to your holiness, your perfection, I am nothing. Have mercy on me. That attitude is real prayer. Secondly, this parable teaches us much more than about prayer. It is about our attitude to others and to God. Look at the way St. Luke introduces the parable. Jesus told a parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous 
and despised others. Verse 9. So this parable is not only about prayer, but also about our basic attitude about ourselves. So it is clear that Jesus reproves two attitudes. Firstly, the attitude of contempt to others, to despise others, looking down on others because of what they are or what they have done. The Pharisee was saying, they are bad, because, whereas I am good. Secondly, and more importantly, the attitude Jesus reproves is what some may think, that they have a claim before God, that because of their good deeds, they deserve the best from God. Or as it is said, that they have made God their debtor and might demand anything from him. This point is important. The Pharisee was wrong in his self-righteous attitude. He thought he could merit heaven. God owes him that because of his good actions. God must be a master who rewards according to my actions. Jesus says, it is wrong to think that going to heaven is a race or a contest. It is doubly wrong for anyone to think that going to heaven is the exclusive right of the righteous. The truth is that none of us deserves heaven and we cannot appropriate heaven with our good deeds. We cannot buy heaven or bribe into it. What then is a ticket to heaven? Humility, the acceptance of our unworthiness and of God's mercy. That's what we see in the tax collector. He hoped for salvation not on the merit of any of his religious or moral achievements, but on the gracious mercy of God. He trusted not in himself or in anything he had done, but only in God's mercy. He would not even look up to heaven, but bit his breast and prayed, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He was aware of his own sinfulness and confessed his deep need for God and hence went home justified before God. Dear sisters and brothers, this is where the importance of the sacrament of confession comes. The confessional is a place where we are humbling ourselves before the priest who represents Christ himself. It is not because we are great sinners that the church wants us to go for regular confession, but it is an occasion to tell the Lord, like the tax collector, I am a sinner when I compare my life with you. Have mercy on me. Some fail to turn to the Lord in confession for they think of themselves as hopeless sinners and unworthy of God's forgiveness. But some others think of themselves as righteous, who don't need God's forgiveness, for they don't commit anything wrong. This latter attitude is more dangerous, more alarming. Learn to humble yourself before God and he will exalt you. St. James chapter 10, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. And the third message for us today is that God sees the hearts, whereas others can see only the external. As prophet Isaiah says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And the Lord told prophet Samuel, the Lord does not see as man does. For man see the outward appearance, but the Lord sees the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7. The Pharisees were the good people and not the bad ones. The tax collectors were the bad ones. The Pharisees were good in all aspects of the law. They kept the law of the Lord perfectly to the minutest detail. And whatever he said of himself is true. He was, in fact, doing more than what the law prescribes. So the Pharisee in Jesus' parable thought he was doing great. Everyone else thought so too. So he really thought he was on the right track for a good 
for a gold medal from God. But he wasn't. The tax collector was obviously the bad one. Everybody of his time knew it. His sins were more obvious, easier to recognize. For he cheated, he extorted, he bribed, and he was a traitor as he collaborated with the Romans in collecting the tax for them. No respectable person of Jesus' time would be happy to be in his presence. The goodness of the Pharisee and the badness of the tax collector were written on their sleeves. Everybody could see it. But Jesus reverses the order. He said the Pharisee was in fact heading in the completely wrong direction and the tax collector becomes the forward one of God. Dear friends, what makes a difference? What brings God's favor is not what a person has done, is doing, but the attitude, what is within our hearts. Jesus is critical of the Pharisee not because of his virtues or anything that he did wrong, but because he exalted himself. While Jesus praised the tax collector because he has humbled himself before God, admitting he is a sinner and asks for mercy. Let us remember, God sees who we really are, unlike what others see and think of us. It is not the social status which matters in the eyes of God, nor our action can earn a special place in the kingdom of God. God cares about how our hearts are oriented to God in humility and to others in charity. So let's pray for that grace of humility before God in our spiritual life and charity before others, towards others in our social life. And then we will find favor with God. May he bless all of us. Amen.